All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, today I'm going to go over this video um, by Amazing Prophecies regarding Revelation 20, the Millennium. All right, real quickly, uh, just to go over a couple of comments here. Um, let's see, right here, uh, th this fella here says Rapture soon. And then the response from another fella is yes, in seven years. Double explanation, exclamation point, whatever. <laughs> now this is great. <clears throat> All right, so I would love if Jesus comes back today. You know, that would be great, wouldn't it? And I would love to be standing next to this fella right here while he explains to Jesus why he can't come back yet I think that would be an interesting conversation okay and then uh, this comment here I'm not sure how to um, you know give a short answer to that if I were I guess if I were to try um, he says I'm being under attack from other Christians this is unacceptable please explain well, the, you know, look, we're all under attack. All right, um, all, all of us that are saved, and all of them that are not saved, everybody is under attack, and not everybody is able to recognize the source of their attacker, if you will. But for sure, we're all under attack. All right, it's a uh, just a product of the world that we live in yeah, you know I don't want to get too much into that because that'll be an hour but I, I do appreciate uh, the question um, yeah, I don't want to leave it alone but uh, I'm not sure how to give a short answer to that so let me sit on it maybe you can follow up on that I appreciate it so let's get into this amazing prophecies and the final events of Earth's history are soon to pass. Buckle your seatbelt. In this short video, we will cover what you need to know about the millennium, the climax of Bible prophecy. Hi, this is Dustin with Hope Through Prophecy, where we help you to better understand Bible prophecy and be prepared for the soon return of Jesus. If you're new, I hope you will subscribe and hit the bell icon below. The millennium is one of the most fascinating and misunderstood teachings in all of scripture. Yeah. A counterfeit teaching of the millennium has deceived millions of Christians. I agree. In this video, we will let the Bible reveal what happens at the start, middle, and end of the millennium. Make sure to watch to the end a misunderstanding of just one of these events could lead to eternal loss. Oh, so whoa. If you misunderstand this, it'll lead to eternal loss. Boy, that's pretty heavy. So how will this thousand-year millennium start? With a resurrection. Speaking of God's right... Okay. Alright, it's going to start with a resurrection. Now this is crucial. Let's, I I've not heard uh, what he says here, so this is new to me too. All right, but this I'll tell you right now. This is crucial. He says it starts with a resurrection, and I do not disagree at all up to this point. Righteous people who are killed for their faith, the Bible says, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Friends, this is the resurrection that we want to be a part of. The Bible refers to it as the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. What a beautiful day that will be, my friends. The righteous reunited with each other and with Jesus. <clears throat> um, you know, what? Hey, you know, he's putting, he's staking eternal life on this teaching. 
and you know correct me if I'm wrong but it it sounds like he's saying that the first resurrection is not Jesus Christ that's what it sounds like to me maybe I'm wrong if you don't <laughs> if you don't believe Jesus is the first resurrection you're doomed and even by his own words the eternal life is dependent on this and I would agree in a sense that if you don't believe Jesus Christ is the first resurrection you're doomed you're not the first resurrection I'm not the first resurrection and I can show you clearly in the Bible that the first resurrection is our Lord Jesus Christ no question about it never to depart again what else will happen at the beginning of this thousand year millennium well it will be the event that accompanies the resurrection of the righteous for the Lord himself shall oh whoa 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 whoa, whoa. We, now we gotta go now we gotta go look at it cause he just there, there's really two places I gotta go alright cause this is critical I mean this guy's putting he's staking everything on understanding this correctly he is claiming that this is the resurrection of the righteous which I would agree if he's talking about Jesus Christ but he's not he's talking about those of us that believe in Jesus Christ and I just it it's mind-bogglingly stupid <laughs> to suggest that Jesus is not the resurrection that we somehow or or maybe it's him I don't know not, not her but him he's the first resurrection I, I don't understand what is this that he's teaching hopefully he'll get to the point but it's very clear here that there is nobody resurrect nobody resurrected other than Jesus until after the thousand years nobody the resurrection is clearly after a thousand years clearly when the thousand years are expired and then is the resurrection I mean, that's clear as day and and that's supported all throughout the Bible all throughout the Bible and it's uh, amazing really you know it's almost like these guys are teaching a, another religion something that is foreign to the Word of God if you go back to Daniel 12 verse 2 and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt there's only one resurrection that's it it's the Lord Jesus Christ he is the only resurrection and we that follow him will be resurrected at the end of the world uh, he is the only resurrection he has led the way for us we that are born of God follow him Christ is the first fruits afterward they that are Christ that is coming it's as clear as day all throughout the Bible shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord yes King Jesus will triumphantly return 
with the entire army of heavenly hosts, setting the sky ablaze with glory. Friends, this is not a secret event. It will be audible, visual, and the entire world will be fully aware. The second coming of Jesus is the most anticipated event in human history. A power All right, hold on a second. All right, so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. Uh, it's not the beginning of a thousand years. I don't know where they get that from. But make no mistake about it. Jesus is asked, what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And when he comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. All right. No question about it. It's not... The thousand years of Revelation 20 is not uh, a bonus thousand years. Is that what? I mean, that's essentially what you're saying. Is it's a bonus thousand years? <clears throat> and though the really confusing thing about this is, if Jesus has already come in the clouds of heaven, why does he come again in the clouds of heaven? Where did he go? Because verse 11 is Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. So he comes, he's on earth, and then he comes again. What is there, two Jesuses? And the really odd thing about this is, is if you really examine this very closely, you have to... <laughs> you have to say that either the scripture is wrong... Or you have to admit that this idea of a thousand years coming after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven is only for people without a head. Okay? I and mean, just admit it, if that's what you believe, that there will be people walking around for a thousand years with no head just admit it it's okay if that's what you think just be honest right, that's why this is why I call it the zombie doctrine a powerful earthquake will also take place at the start of the thousand year millennium and there were whoa whoa Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. Why I missed that one? Hold on a second, fellas. Earthquake. Where's the earthquake at? Oh. Oh, it's not here. Is it here? What does this say? Oh, this is interesting. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Wait, wait a second. For I testify unto every man that hears the words of the prophecy of this book. That would include Revelation 20. Now, who's testifying? I, Jesus, Jesus testifies to every man that hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. In Revelation 20 makes no mention of an earthquake. And this guy here is adding to Revelation 20 an earthquake that's not there. Voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth. That's Revelation 16. Oh my 
goodness. You know, <laughs> really, <clears throat> this is unbelievable, man. It's like, I don't understand the Bible at all. I'm just going to mix and match and cherry pick verse here and a ch cherry pick verse there. Alright, so, man, my goodness. You could not be so ignorant. This is incredible, really. This is as if this person has no understanding of the scripture whatsoever none none whatsoever <clears throat> and how do I explain this now when this is talking about the vials of the wrath of God this is talking about the end of the world when we're up and in the air with the Lord when we are <clears throat> excuse me change in a moment we are changed in the twinkling of an eye all right this is when we are caught up in the air to meet the Lord in the air then the wrath of God is poured upon the people all right this is the end of the world it's not the beginning of a thousand years Hey, this is insanity. So mighty an earthquake and so great. Yes, at the beginning of the thousand years, when Jesus returns, the greatest earthquake in human history will rock this world. Revelation. All right, hold on a second. Now, I think what he said was okay by itself. Great. Yes, at the beginning of the thousand years. Oh, no, 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 no. I take that back. No, 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 no. And it's way wrong. He says at the beginning of a thousand years. So, here in verse 11, I want you to notice when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, the heaven, the earth, and the heaven fled away. <laughs> That's the event that he's talking about. And this event happens at the end of the world. And this event happens after the thousand years. You know, it's almost like those people that say that the rapture is before the tribulation. When the Bible plainly says immediately after the tribulation. The angels will gather together his elect. It's like to hell with what the Bible says. Let's just go with what Nicolas Cage in the Hollywood movie says. All right, and that's what it looks like to me. To hell with the Bible. Let's just teach what the opposite. But the Bible's wrong. And this guy is God Almighty. And we got to listen to him and stop reading your Bible. I mean, really, that's to me, that's what it's, he's saying. Is he not? Years when Jesus returns, the greatest earthquake in human history will rock this world. Revelation 16:20 tells us that this earthquake will even cause the islands and mountains to disappear. We have seen what will happen to the righteous, living and dead, when Jesus returns. But what about the wicked? When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sin cannot stand in the presence of a holy God. Those who have chosen sin over Jesus, who have rejected his love, his pleadings and his mercy will be filled with terror and shame as Jesus returns as conquering king. Alright, so just to make the, sure that this is clear, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world, we are lifted up, first the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The, our enemy is gathered at our feet, the fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. 
All right, that's the end of all wickedness. This happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It's the end of the world. It's the beginning of everlasting life. All right, and this guy's trying to, he's trying to squeeze in a bonus thousand years, which would be completely vain and pointless. It's a completely, um, complete uh, misunderstanding of Revelation 20. Isaiah 11.4 makes it clear that the wicked will be killed when Jesus returns. All right, so he's established that with his own words. The wicked will be destroyed when Jesus returns, when he comes in the clouds of heaven. That's important, okay, because you cannot now say that there are unsaved people living after Jesus returns, okay? Otherwise, you're lying. With the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. The rest of the wicked, who are already dead, will simply remain in the grave at this time. <clears throat> All right, so, does that make any sense to you? Is that supported by any Bible scripture at all? See, I already pointed this one out. Uh, Daniel 12, verse 2, says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And then, of course, he's pointed out um, 1 Thessalonians 4, where it talks about... Uh, um, Let's see. Uh, first, the dead in Christ shall rise, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Alright? Now, what this guy is saying is that some of the wicked will be resurrected, and then uh, some of them will not be. And I'm guessing he's going to say that they're going to be resurrected at, what, another time? What, I mean, what's going on here? Let's listen. So, let us quickly review the events that will start the millennium. Jesus will return. The righteous dead will be resurrected. The righteous living will meet the Lord in the air. There will be a great earthquake. The wicked living will be destroyed. Now that we have considered what will take place at the start of the thousand years, we will next see what will happen during the thousand year millennium. What will be the state of the earth during this time? This earth will experience a thousand year total blackout. It will be empty, void, and desolate. Jeremiah prophesied of this time. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. Some people believe that those who reject Christ will have a second chance to repent during the thousand years. Is this true? Not at all. We have seen that the wicked will be destroyed at the return of Jesus. And where will they be during this millennium of darkness? And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even into the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered, nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. The Bible is clear that the wicked will not be alive during the thousand years. This point is so important, friends, because it reminds us that we must choose Jesus now before it is too late. There will be no second chances. All right, so that's very good. No second chances. And nobody that um, is not saved, everybody that is unsaved will not be living during this thousand years. All right, so then now you got a problem. <laughs> God, you know, and this the problem, you know, the, what the thing is, man, this is what everybody's teaching. Uh, it's incredible. Where am I at here? <clears throat> All right, so according to him, during this thousand years, there are no unsaved people living. Yet, people are getting their heads cut off. 
people are worshiping the beast. How is it? What? How is? How does that work, man? What in the world? Uh, what are you just saying to hell with what the Bible says, and just going with it, man? This guy's on a roll, so maybe we ought to just let him go with it. I don't know. What about Satan? Where will he be <clears throat> during this thousand-year blackout? And I saw an angel come down from heaven. So there's, <clears throat> excuse me, th there's nothing but saved people during this thousand year period and it's, and it's a blacked out world? What? Having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, and he lay hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Revelation is full of symbolism. And here Satan is depicted as being bound by a chain and cast into a bottomless pit. Their Greek word for bottomless pit there we go. is a boot. There it is. There it is, boys. That's it. Right there. I mean, that's essentially saying that I don't believe in any Bible. I don't believe in an English Bible. I don't believe in a Greek Bible. I don't believe in a Hebrew Bible. I don't believe in a Chinese Bible. I don't believe... <laughs> That's unbelievable. Uh, this is so stupid. I, I, I mean, you're going, you're looking up Greek words to learn the English language? It doesn't make any sense. How about try to learn the English language? The language that you're speaking and the language that your viewers know and understand. You don't know Greek. I don't know Greek. You know, this guy doesn't know Greek. He's a liar and a deceiver. And it's just exactly what we see in Genesis chapter 3, in verse 1. Here, let me go to it. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said? Question mark. Yea, has God said? This guy here, Yeah, yea. Yeah, has God said this? Let's go to the Greek. What's the Greek say? So what the English, you can't trust what the English says. you got to go to the Greek. And who the hell knows Greek? I don't. You don't. This guy don't. How about trying to learn English? <laughs> oh, what's wrong with that? Well, you don't think God can speak English? Hey, this is uh, this is incredible. This is what the Muslims do. You know, we're not Muslims. You know, we that are born of God, we're not Muslims. We're not going to say you got to go to the original language. You have to go to the Arabic to learn what Allah really said. Nor do you have to go to the Greek to learn what Jesus really says. This stuff is is pure evil. You don't believe in the Bible that you hold in your hands, and you don't believe in any, you know, imaginary Bible, and you're deliberately deceiving people by pretending to be an expert on a language that you don't know at all. And I guarantee it, he don't know a lick of Greek, and neither do I. doesn't matter if he did, I don't. Busos, or abyss as we use it today. The same word in Genesis 1-2 in the Greek Old Testament is translated as deep. <laughs> Again, why not just learn the English language, the Greek Old Testament? To me, that is... I would say it's low, low... IQ stuff, you know, bordering on, you know, mentally, you know what I mean? 
It's a very low IQ, it's, but it, it's more than that. It's deliberate deception. It's evil. It's pure evil. And it's deliberately lying to people. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. As it was before creation, this world will be dark and desolate. Satan will be bound to the earth during the millennium by a symbolic chain of circumstances, unable to tempt the nations, because everyone right, is... So I don't think he admitted this. This is unbelievable. I don't think he admitted this, but what he's saying here is that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, he's not going to destroy death. That's what he's saying. Satan's still going to be around, and Jesus just can't seem to get him. I mean, imagine the world that he, just trying to follow along with this world that he's imagining. You've got nothing but, what, saved people? And there are no unsaved people, and then you got Satan with a chain around his ankle. One is either dead or has gone to heaven. Satan will have a thousand years to reflect on his rebellion and the pain, anguish, and destruction. Oh my God, you're making Satan out to be an actual person. Uh, so let's go back to Revelation 20. Now think about this. At the end of the thousand years, what happens? Where are we at here? I keep getting the wrong one, don't I? All right, at the end of the thousand years, then Satan is loosed, and he gathers together all the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Well, I thought there was only saved people. And that's what he said. There's no unsaved people living after Jesus comes. And so here we have, at the end of the thousand years, so there are so many people that Satan is gathering. It's as the number of the sand of the sea. It must be saved people. Satan must be gathering saved people. Caused. So what will the righteous be doing during the thousand years? Good we question. have already seen that they will be brought to heaven. But what will they be doing there? And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them. Yes, the righteous will be given thrones of judgment during the thousand years. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, so, and when the thousand years are up, then uh, the thrones are taken away. Apparently. Oh. Um, my goodness sakes, man, how in the world? The only way to come up with this stuff is to try to figure out what another man says. All right, and just saying to hell with the Bible, and that's already been, uh, that's already apparent that this guy doesn't believe the Bible at all. And now he's trying to discern, or uh, he's trying to um, this, you know, figure out what other people are teaching, and uh, none of it makes any sense. All right, Jesus Christ has made us kings and priests unto God, right now. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them. That's us. See, the judgment of God has already been given to those of us that are born of God. We're kings and priests unto God right now. We are a royal priesthood right now. All right, and I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Judgment of God has already been granted to us, and that judgment is everlasting life. It's already been determined. 
We are saved, sealed, secured, sanctified forever. That will never change. The judgment of God has already been established forever for us that are born of God. That will never change. We are kings and priests unto God. Jesus Christ has made us kings and priests unto God right now. Right now, we are royalty right now. After all, the Bible says, Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? So what does this mean? The saints will judge the world. All right, so let's... Be, uh, before he gives some goofy, mind-numbingly stupid answer, let's answer that one. All right. Is it Saints Judge? Oh, where's this at here? Oh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, do you not know that the saints shall judge the world, and if the world shall be judged by you? Are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Alright, so we, we can point to that one. And, um, you know, yeah, it's, real, it's real dangerous to just alter the Word of God based on one single misunderstanding of a, something in 1 Corinthians 6. I mean, come on, man. This does not contradict anything else at all in the Bible. Now you think about, he'll, he might cover this one too, so we're just gonna try to cover both um, both this in Jude and, and also in 1 Corinthians 6. Alright, so where's the prophecy? Yeah, right there. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of thee, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. And then, of course, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 2. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? And, of course, if you're familiar with this, this is uh, essentially, if I'm remembering this correct. Yeah, yeah, this so... Why, why go to law one with another? You know, if you, well, okay. I don't know if I want to explain it. It's kind of it sidetracked a little bit. So, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, the angels of God gather us together. We are up in the air with the Lord. Our enemy is gathered at our feet. All right. So when this happens, the judgment of God is poured upon the people. Now, let me ask you: When we're up in the air with the Lord Jesus Christ, are we not one with God? think about that now when we're up in the air and our enemy is gathered at our feet right I right here in Revelation 3 verse 9 behold I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee we're up in the air our enemy is at our feet are we not one with Jesus right now does he not abide in us and we abide in him are we not one with God Almighty even right now let me see if I can oh I might not be able to find it oh maybe I will Revel, or I'm sorry, John, John 17. All right, uh, that they may be all, but that they all may be one, as thou, Father, 
art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them that they may be one <clears throat> excuse me even as we are one all right so <laughs> I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me this is as clear as it gets we are one with God so when we are up in the air is it God's judgment or is it our judgment upon the unsaved and I think about that if we're one with God is it not also ours to judge as well I think about that And you know what? what are we, we're not even halfway in this video. I think I've already gone an hour, haven't I? I've gone too long. It, look, okay, so how about this? If anybody cares at all, I will do a part two on this, this stuff here. All right? But to make it real simple, you know, Revelation 20 uh, is not a contradiction to anything in the Bible at all. All right, so the thousand years has to be right now, okay? Has to be. Now, people have questions, so just ask the questions, all right? That's fine. But if I could make it easy for anybody to understand, it is the dragon, which a lot of people seem to be caught up on, The dragon is bound for a thousand years so that he should deceive the nations no more. All right, so what was going on before Jesus came along? There was one country, God's country. Outside of God's country were there many countries. All right, whether you want to call it nations, that's fine. You want to call it countries? That's fine too. There's one country, one nation of God, in which the kingdom of God was only for that one nation. Outside of that one nation were the nations deceived by Satan. Alright? Now here comes Jesus, and he takes the kingdom of God away from them and gives it to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof now whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ therefore Satan is bound now fast forward the end of the thousand years Satan is loosed why is he loosed because we are up in the air with the Lord and the only people that are left on the earth are unsaved people and therefore Satan is loosed and why is he loosed to go out and to gather the unsaved people and they are gathered at our feet and fire comes down from God and devours them this goes back to Genesis 3 verse 15 uh, when the Lord said to the serpent all right, when the Lord said to the serpent I will put enmity between thee and the woman 
and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Right, speaking of the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus will stomp his foot on the head of the serpent. All right, this is parallel with what we read here. And fire come, came down from God out of heaven and devours them. All right, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. All right, and we also read this. Oops. Here we go. All right, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Fire comes down out of God and devours them. All right. So again, that's why Satan is bound. And then that's also why Satan is loosed. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. That's talking about those of us right now that are born of God. The judgment of God can never change. We are saved, sealed, secured, sanctified forever. All right, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Who is the first resurrection? It's Jesus. And we that are born of God are born of the Spirit of God. We are born of Jesus. We are partakers of his resurrection right now. Right now, Jesus says, Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. We are partakers of his resurrection. He is our leader. He has died, defeated death, resurrected from the dead, and ascended to heaven. And we are going to follow him. The path that he has, t the path that he has taken, we also will take and we'll meet him in the sky all right we are partakers of his resurrection all right every man in his own order christ the first fruits afterward they that are christ that is coming the bible is very clear about this nobody is resurrected beforehand the only one that's been resurrected is Jesus Christ. He is the only resurrection. And we are only partakers of his resurrection. We don't have our own resurrection. We don't have another one to follow. And we are not the leaders. We are not a leader at all. We are, follower, we are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think that's important to understand, really. All right, so anyways, uh, that's it. That's it. If you guys want me to continue, like do a part two or whatever, you have any questions, comments, anything at all, I appreciate the comments that I've been getting. Uh, they've been fantastic. And, uh, you know, you go back to um, Wild Adventure 10. You know, we're being attacked. Man, this is, this is an example right here of somebody that is attacking the Word of God and he's doing it with greased hair he looks good doesn't he good-looking young fella and he talks with like he knows something but uh, reality is this young kid he don't know uh, he don't know squat right um, and we gotta watch out for these liars and these deceivers they're all over we're constantly under attack by deceiver after deceiver after deceiver and, and that's my uh, that's what's driving me to continue to talk about this I mean this guy put the salvation on the line you gotta know this otherwise you're gonna lose your salvation you heard him say it at the beginning of the video anyways that's enough I could talk for another hour on this you guys have a great day